Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing coming to you with just a really quick fun craft with me. I'm going to be doing some stamping on some fabric and using a variety of stamps. You can see I have piles here. I probably will not use all of them, but I wanted to show you kind of what I'm looking for when I do this and what kind of effects you can get. Um, so we're not just doing stamping on fabric. We're going to incorporate watercolors, a little bit of gold watercolor paint, uh, maybe some splatters, which reminds me I probably need to grab a fan brush for splattering. So this works really well for splattering. I'm using my black archival ink. And what I really want to show you is that when you use archival ink, whether you're using vintage photo or any other color, including black you can immediately go in with wet medium you can immediately go in with the watercolors you can immediately go in with acrylic inks we might even reach behind us and grab some acrylic inks I'm not sure but um, I really just I'm still um, as if you guys have been following um, I went on a little trip with my sisters um, got an infection on the last night we were there and so I've been battling that so I've been very under the weather um, the infections better but the antibiotic is not done and so until that's done I am not feeling well so I needed something that just felt really free and really um, spontaneous and not too complex so um, so that's what we're going to do today so without further ado let me talk to you about supplies um, as I already mentioned black archival link I've got some stamping blocks my Kurataki Gonze watercolors um, I will show you these um, I when I will link them I have the what I call the standard set I also have the art nouveau set so we might tap into that too for some different colors so I'm glad I thought to actually I'll pull that out so let me just move that so we've got both of those paint palettes loving these color li loving this this um, paint I'm a I more of a professional watercolor in terms of supplies I use and the effects that I'm looking for but the Kurataki paints have been really really beautiful they're very pigmented they're a little more opaque than I like but um, they're working they're working so well. So I also have just, um, a, this is a cheap um, Grumbacher round. Uh, it looks like it's a, so I can't tell because it's, um, I left my brush in the water. <laughs> and so part of that, it's probably a 10 would be my guess, size 10. It doesn't matter. I just want something that will get me uh, fast results. Uh, fan brushes, you saw me grab. And um, so I'm going to push my water. I've got a water bucket. Uh, clean water, dirty water, or vice versa, depending on which one I end up making dirty first. I'm just going to slide that back so I have a little bit more room. I'm going to grab my towel because it's good to have uh, something on your lap um, when you're working with watercolors, especially because um, you're constantly kind of um, dipping in, washing your brush off, and then you need to kind of dry the brush a little bit. So stamps. So a lot of these stamps are from Lorna Taylor. Um, at um, Taylor Made Journal. So um, this is the Paris stamp, the laundry one. This is not. Um, we've got the uh, antique one. I, it looks like I haven't even used that one. That's sad. Um, this one, we got a mercantile stamp. And then this one. I think that's all of the Lorna Taylor stamps. I'm going to separate those out. These are Sam Poole clear stamps. I definitely want to use some of those. Not the butterflies, not Sam Poole, but. And then I've just got random ones. These are from your creative studio. I thought it'd be fun to bring some butterflies and a little bit of floral in. So I'm going to set those aside. This is from uh, Tim Holtz. Uh, Tim Holtz, Tim Holtz, and all of the stitch stamps as well. So I'm going to move those over there too. I'm going to move my mouse <clears throat> and then just a couple of other random ones we might tap into. I'm not sure. And then I don't remember where I got, oh, Carabelle Studios. So um, I thought this one would be fun to add onto a piece of fabric. My gold paint from Daniel Smith. And so let me just move those and move those because I want to uncap the watercolor. And have, whoops. And have room to play so I'm gonna uh, whichever one I'm using at a particular time I'll bring more into view so for now I'm gonna move them out because we are going to get stampy so I decided to go ahead and switch over to a voiceover because when I was completely done the video was very very long even cutting out 
um, the parts that I sp are speeding up parts it was just way too long so I'm going to go ahead and walk you through what we were doing here so we're going to start with this long strip of um, the um, kind of a tan colored muslin it's not the thin muslin but here I'm just talking about how uh, there's a benefit to working in strips because then you don't have to worry about um, tearing, tearing and cutting things down and you know cutting into another design so um, we're going to go ahead and just start stamping a variety of stamps I'm going to show you as I go along what stamps I'm using and so I'm going to let you watch for a few minutes here I really, really love that stamp. Um, these stamps, as I mentioned in the intro, are all from Tailor Made Journal. So I'll be, um, I'll try to pop in here and share what stamps I'm using and where they come from. But um, these are just delightful, really vintage, uh, fun to use. This one apparently I had never used. Um, it says Antiques. That is also a Lorna Taylor stamp, and it still had the plastic backing on it. Shame on me. <laughs> Goodness gracious. This is one of the Tim Holtz stamps. I was not super impressed with it for this uh, process, but um, I think it's a beautiful stamp. But for this, I think there's just too much uh, black space, solid space, um, to make it very effective. So um, I wouldn't probably use this again on fabric, but you know, you gotta just play around. Use what you have. You don't have to have what I have. Um, is all you need is a little bit of fabric. I would recommend after getting through the entire process is oh there I was just showing you some of the other examples I did in a previous at a previous time. So um, but my encouragement is use what you have. You don't have to have the exact same stamps I have. Um, you you can play around with whatever you have. You just need a little bit of fabric. I would recommend a light muslin, lightweight muslin, because um, it just it just behaves differently. We used um, that darker brown brown material, and I, I wasn't as fond of that. It was very very hard to tear. This butterfly is actually from your creative studio. Um, I have uh, got quite a stash of their stamps because I think they, I think I did it for like six months where I was getting a box uh, from them and so I have quite a supply of um, stamps. They're great quality you guys so this is not a push for your creative studio but they are amazing. So we're just going to continue on here. That one's a little bit too big to do another one, but I love that laundry uh, stamp. That is so fun. So what was I going to do here? I think I'm going to switch to another piece of fabric. So this is what happens when you get older. Um, the brain does not remember what you did an hour ago. So I literally am doing this voiceover not even an hour after I finished recording. So... <laughs> Um, I don't track very well, but that's okay um, because I'm just um, human and being me. But uh, again, I do not care for that stamp. It's just way too much black, way too much solid material or solid base there. So, um, but again, you don't know until you try and we always have kind of our favorites. And so, um, yeah, we're going to tap into some other ones. I do apologize. It did not end up coming back to the sample stamps I thought that I was going to have time to do that and then I completely ended the video and didn't do that so 
perhaps I'll come back again and maybe we'll try the same process with some acrylic inks or something or some uh, distress sprays or something fun like that that could get really wild and crazy so so yeah but I am trying a bunch of different things here just so you can get an idea of the different kinds of elements you can choose this is a brand new stamp I found in my stash and sometimes those are really hard get to get off of your uh, off the plastic so this one is a little bit too big for that space so you're going to see me uh, improvise there and bring in a piece of parchment paper to um, block off that top section so that it doesn't stamp on the fabric this stamp did not work out well again way too much black base and so it just looks like a big blob I did not even use this one it was just not my cup of tea so um, yeah, just it just looks like a big blob. Not my favorite. about that I did need to take a momentary break so that's why there's a little bit of uh, splicing and dicing in the video flow here but we're going to continue on and uh, again here I'm just commenting on I don't like that stamp not in this uh, in this project so we're going to try to find a stamp to go in that smaller area this is another new stamp i purchased i believe i got it at like hobby lobby or something it was really i think it was on clearance um, so i don't really buy new stamps these days because i have so many and so yeah but this one turned out really really great this will be a great one to use in my journals on uh, signature pages because it's really delicate and small loved it really good so many strings though <laughs> sometimes I'm a fan of them and sometimes I'm not <coughs> so here we're gonna this is the lighter muslin or no this is the medium weight muslin uh, material so we're going to continue on with this bit you're going to notice I'm going to be a little more strategic about where I place these impressions because I am going to be stacking them so I'm just making sure that I have straight lines for dividing This is another great stamp, the Mercantile stamp. Again, this is from uh, Lona Taylor at TaylorMade Journals. That uh, Paris stamp in the upper right-hand corner, I moved the stamp, and so I got kind of a blurred impression. I did not end up, I did end up um, colorizing it, but um, I won't use it as whole. I'll probably just tear it up as fodder for clusters or whatever. So I believe I was talking about that in real time. 
and then this stamp turned out so good and you'll see when we colorize it oh my goodness it was perfect it's a lot bigger and I would probably try to leave it whole because it's just really lovely this is a Stampenda stamp or Ranger or Tim Holt or however you they divide up their world I'm not sure how that all works as I mentioned before but I loved this one it's really really great effect just taking my time because I didn't use a block on that taking my time to make sure that I pressed in on all of the spaces on the stamp to get a good impression in this kind of thing you're not really looking for perfection in terms of the whole image even um, the more broken and um, kind of different um, is is good so it kind of creates more of a vintage look and this stamp I put on crooked and I couldn't figure out when I tore it at the top why it was so crooked and that's why because I stamped it crooked not a problem though not a problem at all Just a little more space on this uh, piece of fabric and then if I remember correctly we have one more uh, section to do but I'm not absolutely sure because by the time I'm doing the voiceover I've already torn them all down so I don't even have them to look at whole anymore so just looking for something to fit in that space so yeah and that was gonna be did this Oh yeah, we did uh, colorize this one. Sorry, I have a hard time when voiceovers to, to try to speak in present tense. So, uh, because I wasn't planning on do a, doing a voiceover, I thought that the video was going to be short and sweet. Nah, not so much. So, voiceover is great for that. That's just a sample of um, the stitch stamp that I used in a previous project. So this is the last piece of uh, material that we're using. Now it turned out great, but it was so hard to tear because it's a lot thicker and it feels like it's more, it's a cotton blend of some kind. So, but it, the effects were beautiful. It just was a little bit harder to tear, tear and get that really kind of rugged look. So these are the stitch stamps from Stampendous, Tim Holtz Ranger love them I use these a lot in all kinds of projects I use them a lot in mixed media especially if I have a certain message I'm trying to communicate in the layers of a mixed media piece because the stitches always remind me that we are always kind of being repaired and we are all kind of stitched together by our experiences by our humanity by our um, upbringing we are all different in that regard and we are somewhat stitched together by all the things that make us who we are so um, the, the stitch stamp is always really cool to use so and there's the little girl I did not like her either I forgot how black how um, solid um, that image is so I don't think I used it I might as just stuck it back in my drawer I didn't throw anything out that I didn't end up colorizing but I, um, I didn't colorize everything on camera so you'll be able to see that in a bit I and there's where I was just met, uh, realizing I did not use the stamp pool stamps we'll do another project and use those um, on another day this is a really fun kind of get busy, create a lot of fodder, a lot of beautifulness um, without a lot of concentration or stress. So just bringing those water pots into view and I'm just going to tear, uh, I didn't tear everything down. The one piece that we started with the long, uh, the bigger piece, I left that whole and I actually preferred working whole than working on these, um, these ones that are, that are torn into smaller bits. They were harder to control as I was trying to colorize them. So I'm just going to cut these apart.
so here I'm just kind of demonstrating how hard that fabric was to tear like it was actually hurting my hands it was so tough but um, you know you never know until you try so I kind of wished I'd left this one in a strip it would have been a lot easier to work with but that is okay and we're going to get ready to get messy with some watercolor I will mention here before we get playing with the paint that watercolor always dries lighter than it is when you apply it so uh, significantly now obviously your darker pigment pigments are not going to be as visibly lighter like they're not you're not going to see the the extreme change um, than you will with a lighter pigment so um, you'll be able to see that in the photos at the end um, when I show you everything all dried and ironed out and beautiful I did not end up even using the um, the that piece of I think I saved that part of that uh, strip one but I didn't keep the typewriter one I didn't even hold on to that because it was disappointing I'm sure it's a beautiful stamp for another purpose though. I'm not sure what I was talking about here, so we're just gonna start playing because again, I don't remember uh, what I was doing. So I think we're gonna start with the big one here, yeah. So um, we're gonna go, I'm gonna, so at first I start with the same colors because I lean towards particular colors and uh, and as I go along in the process, I do branch out and try some colors that I normally wouldn't. Just giving that whole piece a, a spritz of water that's gonna help that pigment to move. It's not gonna naturally move very well on the fabric, but it um, you can uh, buy, you're gonna see me do it here where I'm gonna put the pigment down and I'm dipping back into my water and I'm gonna be able to lighten areas that I that are too dark. And um, so I'm gonna let you watch here for a little bit. If I switch colors or I, I find that there's something important for me to say, I will go ahead and um, speak, but otherwise I'm gonna just uh, turn some music on. I believe I dipped in a di into a different shade of blue there. Uh, I think it's the light blue in the um, the Art Nouveau set. I think I'm reaching for my gold. Oh, a palette. Uh, I have my gold paint out that is my Daniel Smith color, and I just wanted to get some out on a palette so that I could begin um, to apply that where uh, where I wanted to. So. So there you go. There's some some gold. We're gonna go in with um, some more of the raw umber on that section as well and we're going to bring in the gold on those other two brown pieces on the on the right and there's our brown this one turned out a lot lighter than i expected when it was dry i expected that kind of that cobalt teal kind of uh, color to be a little bit more vibrant but again they dry a lot lighter than um than when they're applied so you want to keep that in mind you can always go be a little more heavy-handed with watercolor because it will always dry lighter and that's partially because it is a water medium and it is transparent dipping into so I believe this is I don't know the name of the color but it's like a, a spring green and I thought I would go ahead and do that flower in that and I absolutely loved it and I think I tap into the yellow there too yep really really beautiful but I would definitely recommend working on a big piece of a bigger piece of fabric than the smaller strips because oh you're gonna see me struggle <laughs> here in a little bit. 
Um, this is yet another color of green in the Art Nouveau set. It almost reminds me of like a patina color, really, really pretty. Patina is not necessarily a color that I lean towards, but um, in this application it was really pretty. And I am moving my brush um, not only uh, from side to side but up and down so I don't get um, you know kind of uh, repeated lines of color patterns in the um, in the background here so you kind of can keep that in mind too and kind of um, go back and forth between those two methods coming in with a little bit more of one of those green colors I can't remember which one exactly but it's one in the art nova set this is a beautiful color i think it was deep turquoise and it's in the standard what i called the standard color set for the kurataki paints and this one was the bomb i love how this one turned out i love that it's so different from the other tones that i've been leaning towards and it was really vibrant and bright with kind of a a spring green uh, with that um, with that deep turquoise was just perfect absolutely stunning and what I love about this concept is that you could actually take each of these pieces and sew them onto a piece of paper um, even like a coffee dyed piece of paper so that you didn't have light color peeking through underneath and you could actually um, stitch them on a page or stitch them on a tag or a pocket. Um, they would be hard to adhere um, as they are because they don't really have any substance to them because the fabric is so thin. Um, so I'm going to play around with what um, what I want to do with that but um, I was showing you there that my my gold paint did get a little bit muddy because I'm going in and out back and forth but um, anytime that happens in your palette is all you have to do is go in with a clean wet brush and wipe off the top layer of um, the paint that's been um, that's setting on your color um, so that you can minimize the contamination so it's easy it's an easy fix so just wanted to get some of that moisture off of the back of the, um, the strip here. We're going to continue on. Going in with the pinks now. Uh, these are from the Art Nouveau set. Um, not colors I typically go for. Like when I'm painting a rose or I'm painting flowers, I definitely go towards the pink. But I, I tend towards the professional colors like uh, rose matter or those kinds of colors and so I don't tend to think about um, how these other pinks and reds in a, in a more uh, student grade paint um, behave and they're really really lovely. The uh, Kurataki paints are a little more opaque than what I typically use but you cannot even hardly tell that in this application because the um, the paints are so vibrant and so beautiful that yeah I just think they're absolutely gorgeous because you could see there I went back in with that pink over the raw umber and it worked just fine so they're off to the right i'm just dipping into my gold paint just to add that gold accent i love gold really really love gold as i've mentioned before and so i believe that here in a moment i'm going to get up and go put this on my kitchen table on a towel to dry Just cleaning up that surface so that we can continue on. And then I thought we would try another another technique by coming in um, and doing kind of a dip technique with the fabric. Um, you're going to see very quickly that it does not work very well. Uh, for starters, the watercolor just beads up on that mat because that's what it's designed to do. Oh, 
I was trying to adjust my camera and then I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm still in my pajamas. <laughs> my lap is not something I definitely I want to have in camera, so my apologies for that. Just giving all those colors a good spritz. Uh, I want them nice and wet uh, before I try this uh, dipping technique. Again, it did not work so well, so we will um, not spend very much time here and we'll go back to the other process because what happens here is um, so I was I was basically just tapping on the fabric because I didn't want to waste that paint which is why I did end up going right directly to fabric but it did not work out well at all same with the brown so that's the raw umber and uh, what I ended up having happen is those two colors just kind of made an uglier color because they were kind of smushed together and that's not what I wanted not what I was looking for so we're gonna fix it though here we go just adding some water and some more of the raw umber paint to just fix that. And this is the part where you're going to see me really struggle with holding on to those little pieces of fabric because it was really much different experience than working on that larger piece. So again, I would recommend that you keep it whole if you can manage that. I know that looks really dark, but I promise it's going to be lighter and you're going to be able to see the words a lot more. Also, you have that option like I just did by just tapping that with my towel and taking off a little bit of the pigment off the top. I loved how this one turned out. This is that more patina color and it was gorgeous. And the end, pro the end result on this one was really, really beautiful. Uh, one of my favorites uh, by far. So... Just so much gorgeous fun. I love it. This is just a great way to get inky and, and have some play without, you know, being too serious, especially when it comes to watercolor. I often get very serious with my watercolor, I guess because professionals are serious, but they're not really. You know, the best watercolor artists that I watch are very playful and very forgiving of themselves and their process and their mistakes and their learning curve and all of that. So just coming in with a more of that gold paint. I just uh, put some out there on my table. Uh, it was a little bit easier to get to than on my in my palette, so lovely. We're just gonna set those aside to dry and then we're gonna move on to some more. I love working directly on my glass mat because as you can see, I can do the work. It's not affecting my table and I can just wipe it off and everything comes off of this glass. It's, it's amazing. So here we're going to have some play with some of the other ones. And I believe that this is the last that we're doing on camera if I remember correctly. Um, but we're going to come and do our original, um, our original sequence um, the same way. So I'm not dipping, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I dipped into a really, really deep blue over in the Art Nouveau uh, palette. So um, that was really, really pretty, very, very grungy. And then coming in with more of the raw umber, I will wipe that off with my towel a little bit just to lighten it so you can see that we do are able to pull up a little bit of that pigment there um, just right away, even though it will uh, dry lighter as I mentioned. <clears throat> Trying to spread out that gold. Sometimes I got a little bit more in one spot than I wanted, but so beautiful. gorgeous gorgeous I love 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 cobalt blue and or cobalt turquoise and brown together they are absolutely scrumptious so we're going to do something a little bit different with the butterfly I'm going to tip I believe I'm going to dip into the reds here I was just showing you my water bucket there um, and how I was able to maintain a clean pot and a dirty pot so as long as you're always rinsing off in the dirty water and getting new water, fresh water to go into a new color with the clean water, your clean water will stay clear and clean. I highly recommend it. 
So this is, I can't remember, I think this is Rose Matter Deep in the uh, standard palette from uh, Kartaki. And I did, I did kind of, kind of get a muddy look here because uh, sometimes when you mix a red and a yellow, you expect to get more of an orange, but depending on the, uh, whether the red is more cool or more warm will determine what kind of color mix you get. So I'm coming back in with the cadmium yellow from the standard set as well. And, um, and then coming back in, I believe I went to the Rose Matter Light, or Mar this is the Rose Matter Dark, um, just to bring back a little bit more of that pink. Uh, and I just, as I mentioned, I oohed and awed about these stitch stamps, but <laughs> I absolutely love them. They're, they're great. I haven't used these for some reason. You know, when you stick something in a drawer, you forget about it. So it's like right to my left. It's within reach, but I still forget about them. So I need to keep that in front of mind so that I can start using these little stamped fabric bits in my projects. So um, I don't remember. That's a really deep blue there, kind of like an ocean, a deep ocean blue, really gorgeous color. And I believe that is in the um, standard palette. And more of the raw umber. I really like that combination. So, you know, that's again, do what you love. So if you tend towards more pastel colors, you can just paint in those light colors and do this process without grunging anything up. You don't have to go grunge. I, I just doing what I love and I encourage you to do the same because that's where we, we end up loving our results a lot more when we just do what brings us joy. Uh, playing in other colors is also good but um, it's okay to return to your first love, so to speak. So coming in with some of the pink again in the Art Nouveau set. And this is where I noticed that they are very, very opaque. A real transparent color would not be affecting that black ink at all. Um, but yet when I go into a little bit darker pink, you can see it's very vibrant and uh, very complimentary, very, very beautiful. So and I think that was a little bit of yellow and then coming in with the gold just a bit. I decided to bring in that last butterfly just because I felt like I needed a little, little bit more butterfly love. So that's why I'm doing that. Not sure what I was contemplating there, but uh, this is one of the greens in the standard palette. I believe it's the sap green and the raw umber again. Once the fabric got wet, it kind of stayed down a little bit better, but it was a challenge. That's really, really dark, Cara Renee. Woo! A little bit more green. And this one was really kind of blasé, I think, in the end, but I was also getting to the end of my process and I need to get, uh, I was needing to get up and get dressed um, to go and pick up my two of my grandsons for a birthday adventure this afternoon and overnight. So I uh, just tapped in right directly with that into the gold paint just to kind of use it up. And so I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to um, dry these um, out. I'm going to dry them with my heat tool and then I'm going to um, iron each of the pieces and I'll tear up the large uh, piece that we did together and I will come back to you and share what they look like when they are all dried and ironed. Look at how pastel-y that flower turned out. I absolutely love it. You can see mostly green, but there is a little bit of a tinge of yellow, which I think is lovely. That one was much lighter. I tore it crooked, so I kind of cut off the words, but that's okay. This one is one of my favorites. That was that large script stamp. And again, it dried really, really light. I was very surprised by that. And then that one I love too. I, I don't tend towards the lighter, more pastel colors, but this one was really, really pretty in the end. So lots of different applications for that. And all the grungy ones I love, I don't even, it goes without saying, that was one of my favorites too. Um, really, really bright, um, bright green. This is the one that was all blurry because it kind of double stamped and so I'll probably just tear that one up into some layered fodder for other things. And then the stitch stamp, stitch stamp. And the video is gonna end here before I can finish um, bidding you adieu. So I'm gonna let you finish looking while I 
continue uh, to talk for a few minutes. So um, I do want to invite you, if you haven't checked out my group, it is called B.Reborn art journal inspiration group we would love to see you over there we're not looking for the group to be huge so um i don't i don't push it and i don't advertise it but i am letting you guys know from time to time in the videos that it is available um, there are some rules around content um, but you can check that out in the rules um, and yeah so um, i hope that you enjoyed the video guys i hope that you'll give it a try and you'll play 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 it's great fun to use watercolors in a variety of ways and so I would love to see what you end up trying and again I would advise you use a muslin a lighter muslin fabric I found that I liked the results a lot better so my friends I will see you in the next video take care bye bye